I just wanted to let y'all know that we were uh, successful in helping to get Jason set up with um, protective service hours, uh, protective supervision hours through IHSS. Um, and that's a big relief because, you know, we don't know for sure he's he's going to be 30 he, he just turned 29 we don't know for sure if he's going to improve or grow you know it's 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 hard to know but at the moment he is completely dependent on us for for pretty much everything um and he has no sense of danger. He has no sense of, of strangers. Um, you know, he does things that are inappropriate in public. And if we don't keep our eye on him, he, he would walk up to somebody that he finds for whatever reason um, interesting or attractive to him to where he'll walk up and want to, you know, touch them, rub their arm. Uh, it's it's a scary thought so we have to make sure that we're with him at all times he can't go into the bathroom by himself because he he'll either go into some of his um, stemming routines like tapping the sink real hard with the back of his hand or playing in the water eating the soap drinking the water from the the faucet so we can't let him go by himself because he also sometimes will spend time um, private time, um, things that he should do in private. And we can't allow him obviously to do that at the urinal in a public restroom. So we have to go in the bathroom with him. So there are all these things that require us to be by his side at all times. Um, and so that's why we wanted protective s supervision is because down the road when he's with his sister Miranda when we're no longer able to we're no longer able to care for him she needs to have those hours in place so that's why we worked hard to get this and it, it was interesting I wanted to share with you though the process we had to have an assessment done so someone came into the home and they asked me a bunch of questions they tried to ask him questions he can answer some questions but you know a lot of times he has no idea what they're asking him he doesn't know how to answer so he'll just stare at you you know if he's not sure what you're saying and how to answer he's just stare at you uh, so I I tried to help with some of those answers um, and I explained to the person he can dress himself, he can take his own shower, he can choose what he wants to eat. We go to a restaurant, he can choose the picture, um, he can choose his music, he can go on YouTube. There's a lot of things that he can do that a typical man his age can do. She was a young person. I don't think she really understood. I, I, I don't think she really understood what's going on with him. Um, but it should have been obvious with the way he is was trying to answer the questions and and the way i explained our life with him i gave her a full written explanation of of what we go through with him and why we need to keep an eye on him because of the danger um, when he's in public or even at home he he taps the stove constantly and then he'll play with the the knobs so i can't you know, I've got to constantly be aware of that. Our house is small enough that I can hear him when he does it. So it's not like I don't know when he does it. Um, he doesn't get up in the middle of the night and do things or anything like that. But she still seemed to be like, well, I'm kind of on the fence. Um, I'm not sure because he seems so self-directed. And I'm like, well, yeah, he, he is to a certain extent. He's not completely... Um, He's not, he's not delayed to the point that he can't make decisions for himself. It's not that. It's that he doesn't have the filters to understand danger and to understand um, things that a person his age should. It, it, it's like the difference between what a five-year-old might understand 
and what a 25-year-old typical person would understand. Some things he's at a five-year-old level or, or younger, but she didn't understand that. So I'm like, okay, do you understand autism? Because uh, you're not really giving me the impression that you know what's going on here. Anyway, so when she told me I'm kind of on the fence, I thought, oh, great. Okay, so we're probably headed for an appeal here. But the weird part was that happened on, I think it was a Thursday, I want to say. Yeah, she was there on, like on a Thursday. I And she said, my supervisor is not in and on Friday, so I won't be able to, probably won't hear back or be able to share any of this with her until next week. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. Um, I didn't expect to hear for weeks because that's usually how things go. And I thought I would get um, a notice of action letter probably a week later or something. So when I went to put in the timesheet hours for his uh, regular uh, living service hours, which is like um, helping with his laundry, helping cook and all of that, I went to put in the hours for that on Friday and, or I'm sorry, on Monday, because Monday was the, the 15th. And when I went in there, I noticed he had a balance of hours that was way more than he normally has, let alone what should have been left for the month or, the, you know, starting for the month. So I thought, well, that's strange. And come to find out two days later, I get the notice of action that he has been approved for the hours. So I don't know if she told me I'm on the fence just to not get my hopes up about it or if she when she got back to her office and shared the report with her supervisor if her supervisor was like well yeah of course he gets these hours plus I had to quit my job to stay home with him and that in itself should have said okay the daycare won't take him and I, I gave her the latest report from the day activity center and it shows in their report all of the issues that they had with him and and how staff had to be one-on-one -on -one with him constantly and this and that. So I think that that, in the end, the supervisor probably looked at that and said, well, yeah, this guy definitely needs, needs help. So I'm grateful. Bottom line is we got the hours. I'm grateful. Um, and I, I feel like it's going to enable me to, uh, it's reduced a lot of anxiety for the future. Like I said, whether it's my daughter Miranda, which she's fully on board to take care of her brother, but you know, things happen and I don't expect her to follow that if anything changes in her life, obviously. But I want whoever does take care of him when I'm gone to have things in place. So it's all good now. And I just want to let people out there know, be sure to appeal this. And and there are a lot of videos about IHSS and about how to get the protective supervision hours, how to get IHSS hours, period, as a parent provider. Go, to, go on YouTube and just look up all those and listen to what they say because there's so many... Um, good tips and do it before you start the process go watch these videos because they'll give you all kinds of tips on how to make sure you're setting it up so they're seeing your child in their true nature you know rather than well behaved and sugar coated because that's not going to give them the information they need so go watch those videos. I think that the, they were really helpful for me, although I watched them after I had already applied for all this stuff. But um, but it made a lot of sense what they said, and I should have intuitively understood that. But instead, oh, you know, and he's learning this, and I'm so excited because yesterday he did that. And, you know, they don't need to hear that because that, if it's an inexperienced person like the one I met with or a young person that's maybe never been a parent or you know, they certainly don't have a disabled child, they're not going to understand. They're going to think, oh, well, then this child is improving. Well, yes and no. You know, there, there are certain levels that they can reach in one area, but they're never going to reach those same levels in other areas. It's very mixed, um, and they're all different. So I would advise you, go watch those videos and... 
some people don't want to be their child's teacher, uh, job coach, uh, recreation supervisor, living skills coach, on top of being the parent. Well, I get that. And I totally support people in whatever decision they make and if they can find a day activity center that has doesn't have a waiting list and one that will take uh, adults with severe behaviors that's awesome but not every area has that my area it's scarce uh, so for me to stay home was a choice that alleviated the stress for the family as well as um uh you know, the stress of having to try to find something for him, uh, someone that we could trust. It, it, there's so much involved. I was close enough to retirement. I'm 62. Jason, you say hi. Say hi. Huh. I'm, I was six, turning 62, so I was able to take early retirement. Thank you, buddy. You want to sit down right there? Sit uh, down. You, uh, don't, you don't have to. Uh, you can if you want. So that's our story. Anyway, I just wanted to let everyone know where we are on that and um, still working on the self-direction. I can't find, or self-determination, I'm sorry. I can't find a um, program planner. I have looked, I have contacted probably 12 people so far on the list and some don't get back at all and some say, oh no, I'm not taking any new clients. So I'm not having much luck with the self-determination program, but uh, I'm not giving up yet. And uh, we'll see where that goes. I'll keep you posted. And the behavior chart, too, um, I'm about ready to record the results. And I will share the graph, hopefully, in my next video. Anyway, that's enough for today. Thank you for listening. And uh, comment below if you have any suggestions or questions. Um, I am happy to share anything that I have um, in the way of helpful knowledge. And I'm also happy to receive any suggestions that you may have. So thank you. Have a great rest of your day.